I always wanted to do animation. This is awesome and we're making movies. It was just pure joy for me. It was what I loved so much. We are in Emeryville, California, outside San Francisco, and we're about to go into Pixar. I'm a director of photography for lighting, which what that really means is in live action films, they have a director of photography that's also known as the cinematographer, and they're doing camera and lighting and it's happening all at once. In our computer world, we split that job into two. So we have a, a director of photography for camera and a director of photography for lighting. And so all it really means is I direct the lighting for the films. It's this perfect combination for me of, of art and technology, where there's um, some coding, a lot of like problem solving and getting the computer to do what you want it to do. But the end result is the visuals, which to me is so magical where you are doing this very left and right brain thing. And that's kind of my happy place. I ended up getting a camera and making a lot of animation when I was a kid. About sixth or seventh grade, I heard about a school of Cal Arts. Basically, that was it. You know, I got accepted and I was able to go. And uh, John Lasseter hired me in at the very end of '92, so I've been here pretty much ever since. Wow. So you were there for Toy Story. And... I was there for Toy. That's what I was hired to do: is Toy Story, art direct Toy Story. You mentioned that you started working for Pixar uh, straight out of undergraduate, right? Yeah. This is a huge name. So coming into this environment and working here, was that scary? Well, the funny thing is back then it wasn't a huge name because Pixar made Toy Story, but it, no one, everybody seemed to think Disney made Toy Story back then. Like they didn't know what Pixar was and it had Disney's name on it and everybody knew what Disney was. And so for me, I knew what Pixar was and it was my dream job already then because it was, to me, the pinnacle of computer graphics and what you could do with a computer to make art and tell stories. We were just making stuff up as we went and trying to just improve film to film on how we made the films and how great the story was and how great the visuals were. And so you could watch these giant technological leaps happening where it's like on Monsters Incorporated, they want Sully to have hair and nobody had done hair. How do you do hair? I don't know, like over the course of the whole movie and so figuring that stuff out. And so it's things like that that have actually been the biggest challenge, I think, to overcome when you're in a new thing and you don't know what you're doing and finding the way, the strength to kind of tromp through that even though you're having doubts, till you get to the place where you actually have enough experience that, that you don't have to deal with that anymore. The fun part is doing all the research and, and really getting into it, and getting to its bare essence, visually, and then how you present it and all of that. But uh, the one kind of golden rule for me is start from character and everything else will follow. Design for design's sake just is, doesn't interest me in the least. People always will say something, some things to me like, uh, that wasn't a very good film, but it sure looked great. And I'm like, I don't care about that. You know, and I say, yeah, it looked great. I don't care, you know? It's like, I I'm more interested in the film making me care. And if the visuals are great and, and really are working to kind of advance that, um, the better. My favorite thing that I ever got to work on was, uh, I got to light the jellyfish sequence in Finding Nemo. And it was kind of one of those things that I had gotten promoted to a job where I wasn't supposed to do lighting anymore because I needed to be hands-on managing people, but I really, really wanted to light the jellyfish. And so I said, okay, this is so ridiculous looking back on it now, but I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll take the promotion if you'll still let me light the jellyfish, right? <laughs> and so at, you know, like seven o'clock at night when I finished managing people, I'd go off and light the jellyfish until late at night, but it was just pure joy for me. It was what I loved so much. I was working on it and I got all the pieces balanced just so the kind of murkiness of the water and the caustics on the bells of the jellyfish and all the fog beams and stuff. And I, we send it off to render overnight. You come in in the morning and it's sort of like this moment where you're either gonna get something that's garbage because something went wrong or you get to see your work from the previous day. And I pulled it up and I was like, oh! Like everything kind of came together. It was just the, the, the most distinct moment I'd had where you go, this is working. And when I showed it to the director, you know, you're in a room full of people in a screening room and there's maybe 50 people in there. Normally what happens is the director says, oh, this is great, okay, well, let's change this and that. And they give you a few notes that you're gonna work off of. And um, I showed it and the director was silent and you never know what that means, right? And then he just started clapping and then the production designer starts clapping, the whole room starts clapping. And so it was this moment of like, you know, you put in this hard work late at night and, and it all kind of came together to make you feel like, 
all right, I do know what I'm doing and this is awesome and we're making movies and um, it was, that was like my favorite moment here, I think. With Wally, we, we went to cruise ships and got th very thorough tours of the interior bowels yeah. of a cruise ship and uh, also trash dumps. Yeah. A lot of them. Uh, <laughs> but the, the reward is, of course, when you get to see it go out in the world and you know, see what people think. You know, it's, it's terrifying and, and thrilling at the same time. The only advice I would give anybody would really be to have fun with some research. Once you get interested in something, go and find out as much as you can about it. I mean, it's not that hard to do, especially with the internet, you know? You can always get a dozen books on a subject and just read through them and uh, just keep doing that, you know? That's, that's really it. But a lot of people get stuck in their little world of what they do, and so to, to take yourself out of that and go experience the rest of the world, go to different places and try different foods, and go see a rock concert, then go see a ballet, and then go see a, an opera, and then go see a movie, and it's, it's just see everything.